The people of northeastern Pennsylvania have always lived in the shadow of coal. For before there was coal, few people settled in these hills and valleys. The mining companies that came and prospered are gone, but they've left a reminder of their presence. It is not prosperity or wealth they have left behind. It is a legacy measured in far more costly terms. Good afternoon, I'm Governor Tom Corbett. For the past 25 years, you have led the way in reclaiming our land, waters, and air, all by finding a second life for coal refuse left behind from the preceding centuries. Not only are you restoring our environment, you're adding to our power supply by using the most advanced and environmentally friendly technology available today. You've shown that good environmental practices mean good business. And over the past quarter century, thanks to your work, Streams that once ran orange are now teeming with fish, and barren wastelands are now parks that everyone can enjoy. As governor, I congratulate you on your accomplishments, and on behalf of all Pennsylvanians, I say thank you to Jeff McNelly and the good people at Aripa for proving that energy not only equals jobs, it equals a stronger, healthier, and more beautiful Pennsylvania. Congratulations. And of course, the famous Breaker Boys an army of young workers who started their careers at the age of eight or nine. They worked 10 hours a day, six days a week, crouched on narrow planks over shoots of moving coal, picking out the slate, rock, and other unwanted material. There was no escape from the crash and thunder of the machinery as the coal was crushed and separated according to size. The boys worked in a towering structure known as a breaker. Raw coal from the mines was fed into the top and processed as it traveled down through the breaker. The usable coal found its way to the customer. That which was left found its way into piles, hills and mountains called culm banks. Today, the breaker boys are long gone, but the breakers themselves are still very much in operation. Even in the scaled-down industry of the 1990s, coal continues to be mined and processed, while the culm banks continue to grow. Good afternoon. I'm Congressman Lou Barletta, representing Pennsylvania's 11th District in the United States House of Representatives. I'm very sorry I could not be with you today as Aripa celebrates 25 years of hard work, turning coal refuse into electricity and helping to clean up our environment. Our part of Pennsylvania has a proud history when it comes to coal. If it were not for our hard-working coal miners, the United States would not have had the fuel it needed to lead the world during the Industrial Revolution. America would not have emerged as a superpower in the 20th century and become the beacon of freedom and hope for the rest of the world that it remains today. But with these coal mines come environmental challenges, and that's where Aripa steps in. Over the years, the electricity generating plants run by your members have been taking the coal refuse from abandoned mines and land areas and turning it into electricity. This alternative energy uses coal ash to take environmentally hazardous areas and restore them to their natural conditions. We're talking about miles and miles of formerly polluted land areas, streams and rivers, and even uncontrollably burning coal refuse fires. Aripa has addressed these problems and more, all the while producing electricity for our citizens to use. Your members are also employers, helping to create jobs and stimulate the local economy. So today, I congratulate you on 25 years as an association and send you best wishes that you may keep doing what you're doing, keep generating alternative energy, and keep cleaning up the environment. As always, it is an honor to serve you in the United States Congress. Here, the Schuylkill County Commissioners are getting to see the challenge firsthand. Dave Martin, spokesman for an industry group known as Aripa, explains. There are literally hundreds of millions of tons of that waste material out there, and it's not just laying there benignly smiling at the universe. This stuff catches on fire, it slides down a mountain and blocks roads, 
Worst of all, people don't really think about this, every time it rains, it leaches acid out into the ground. So the groundwater table, it picks up minerals, it kills all the fish in the streams. It's a, it's a real environmental problem. It didn't start out this way, I can guarantee you that. Back in the spring of 89, the Gilbertson Power Company was just coming out of a very long, arduous, miserable, nasty startup procedure where we finally were getting up to full load after several months. And I went and talked to the plant manager across the road at the Wheelerator Frackville plant, and then we called Charlie Boland, who was in charge of the manager at Schuylkill Energy Resources plant, and he said, hey, you know what? You guys are pretty smart. Why don't you tell me some of the good things you did, and then if I can think of one, I'll tell you some of the good things that I did to make our plant a little bit more successful. And that turned into a weekly meeting between three plant managers, then four plant managers, and five, and six, and seven, and 10, and eventually 12. And our focus at that time was just, how do you get these damn things working? Well, we got to work. And we finally got a chance to pull our noses out of the sand and look around. The you know little story, like, if, you, if you spend all your time fighting off the alligators, you kind of forget that you're really there to drain the swamp. Well, that's the way we were. Oh. We got rid of most of the alligators. We can now drain the swamp. But what else can we do? Well, we could talk to our neighbors, for instance, who were not always happy with us because of steam safety valves popping open in the middle of the night when they weren't supposed to and trucks going by and bothering them, the dust and the noise. And you gotta remember, we built this plant in an area where the ambient noise level was something like 35, 35 to 40 dB. As you can hear a pin drop two blocks away. <laughs> and now you've got this 12 story tall box full of machinery and trucks and equipment Rolling around 24 hours a day, and it wasn't quite 35 degrees to be up TV and more. So we went and we invited our neighbors to tour the plant. We talked to them. Then we said, gee, that worked pretty good. Why don't we get our county commissioners? That worked pretty good. Said, Why don't we get our state rep? And God help us, maybe we can even talk to the DEP about some of the problems we're having. Yeah. That's a good idea. And then some idiots said, let's go to Washington and talk to our representatives down there. And it just kind of snowballed. So now, now, I am so glad to be out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like going to Washington. I really, really don't. I'm never comfortable talking to the movers and shakers on the national stage. If they want to talk about shoveling coal and whacking moles and stuff, I can, I can get into that. Um, so I kind of withdrew from the active leadership of the uh, record several years ago, and Harvey Beavers came along. <laughs> Harvey is an ex Navy squid, spent a lot of time underwater in a nuclear submarine and other ventures such as that. So he knows a lot about steam and and refractory and stuff and whacking moles, strangling alligators, he's into that stuff. Yeah. We all, the one thing all of us have, Harvey Beavers, Gary Anderson, we all have a level of plasticity that we've lived in and worked with. And the people that worked with us. And it's as much their plant, it was as much as it was ever my plant, or the owner's plan, when a guy walks up to you in the middle of the afternoon and says, hey Dave, I got this funny funny noise I hear in the water feet, my water feet water puzzle. Right. Come take a listen. <coughs> Run right out there and listen right down now. And you're right, something is wrong. Thanks, Charlie. Let's call in the experts and see what they can do. A water feet water pump. I don't know today, it's probably $150,000 to $200,000. More important, if the darn thing breaks, you can't run your plant. And it's important that it run properly. 
Today, this problem is finally being reversed. Cogeneration plants, which burn comb to generate both electricity and steam, are becoming a familiar sight throughout the region. With 10 plants in operation throughout Pennsylvania, these cogen plants, as they're commonly called, can generate enough electricity for 320,000 homes. That's enough power to serve a population larger than Allentown, Scranton, and Wilkes-Barre combined. Originally, this organization, as far as the plant membership went, was to share technical advances or abilities between the plants, because we weren't competing with one another. We all had independent contracts. We were created in the purpose, and we generated, and we all wanted to be successful. As one guy figured out how to solve some problem, it turned out that regardless of which boiler manufacturer stuck your hibachi in there, uh, it had a similar problem. Uh, it may not have been exactly the same, but if you figured out a solution and you could share it with somebody else, it saved them having to go through a bunch of crap to solve it themselves. Over the my tenure, I, he was leaving, so they, uh, by default, I ended up in the slot. <laughs> We converted more toward, uh, uh, we were having more troubles with the regulatory aspects of operating these power plants. Little by little, various uh, regulatory agencies were writing things that impacted how we did business right then, and almost always it impacted whether or not our ownership was making any money off our operations. So we had to take an interest in trying to at least keep uh, the results of their efforts from destroying us. We were fairly successful in most cases, although over the years it expanded geometrically. I uh, got to the end of my rope here a few years ago. Uh, by then, that was pretty much what we were doing. Somebody had to read all of the bureaucraties that came out the various places that can come from and figure out what it would do to you, and that's how I got involved, and write uh, a response to see if we could at least maneuver it so it didn't destroy us. And I did that for several years, and we changed uh, executive directors in my regime. We went to, formerly there was Billy Ramsey here, who was a lawyer. She had one view of how to do this, and then we have now Jeff McNelly, who had a negotiation with a legislative group background. So we had to change how we did business and it worked out well and I hope we continue doing business. Unfortunately, the plant I came from has went out of business because we were too little to survive in today's uh, environment. But uh, I hope the rest of the plants keep going and I'd like to think that 20 years from now or so, if I'm still around, we're still popping out of restaurants. Congratulations to Aripa on 25 years of providing a voice for independent power companies that provide environmentally beneficial alternative energy. For 25 years, Aripa and its member companies have tirelessly worked to meet our country's energy, industrial, economic, and environmental needs. There are three Aripa member plants in Pennsylvania's 12th Congressional District that use coal refuse to generate electricity for Western Pennsylvania families. The Cambria Cogeneration Company, the Ebensburg Power Company, and the Culver Power Project. Aripa does not just have a presence in western Pennsylvania, they have 11 member plants across the state and a multitude of supporting and associate members across the country. Aripa member plants, like the 3 MPA 12, remove and convert piles of leftover coal into affordable domestic energy. Aripa member plants not only generate power through environmentally friendly technology, but they also create family sustaining jobs lower energy prices, and clean up our land and water in Pennsylvania. These efforts have led to the restoration of hundreds of miles of polluted streams and the reclamation of more than 7,200 acres of previously damaged land. Overall, this has saved between one and two hundred million dollars in potential cleanup costs for taxpayers. Unfortunately, EPA regulations are threatening to shut these plants down. To address this problem, I introduced H.R. 3138, the Sense Act. This legislation would help keep these plants open, save local jobs, and restore the environment to its natural state. Congratulations to Aripa again on their 25 years of important work to educate, advance, and promote the production of affordable electric power using innovative, environmentally friendly methods. 
Greetings. I'm Congressman Glenn G.T. Thompson, representative for Pennsylvania's 5th Congressional District, an area of the Commonwealth that is blessed with plentiful energy resources, including coal. For this reason in Congress, I serve as a member of the Congressional Coal Caucus and a member of the House Natural Resource Subcommittee on Energy and Minerals. As you all know, developing our abundant energy resources, along with new and innovative energy technologies, is America's only path to economic security. Over the years, technological advancements have enabled us to turn coal waste into affordable domestic energy in order to fulfill our domestic power needs while also improving the environment. For the past 25 years, the Anthracite Region Independent Power Producers Association has served to represent electric generating power plants that employ these innovative technologies and convert coal waste into alternative energy. In addition to the tremendous environmental benefits resulting from these innovations, the industry supports thousands of jobs, including in economically distressed areas of Pennsylvania. Now, despite the advantages of waste coal plants, the federal government has continued to impose regulatory standards that threaten these plants and jeopardize the significant environmental and economic successes the industry has provided. In Pennsylvania's fifth, at both the state and local levels, our waste coal plants have been recognized for their environmental contributions, cleaning up abandoned coal fields, and converting waste products into energy. But at the federal level, the Obama administration has consistently attacked these plants in an effort to shutter them completely. In recent years, we've seen operations close their doors, including Piney Creek in Clarion County. Other continue, others continue to support local economies and good paying jobs, including Cogentric's Scrubgrass Plant in Venango County. For this reason, I've been active on your behalf. We've pushed hard through oversight of the administration and to co-sponsor and advance legislation such as H.R. 3138, the Satisfying Energy Needs and Saving the Environment, or SENSE Act, that would stop the Environmental Protection Agency from forcing the closure of these important facilities. In order to ensure these facilities are able to remain in business, we must continue to push back and fight for what is right, which I have no doubt ARIPA will continue to do in the years ahead. On this 25th anniversary, I am proud to stand with you and offer my sincere congratulations on this important milestone. Thank you and God bless. The process used to generate electricity from the comb and reclaim the land begins by moving tons of material from the comb banks to a specially designed boiler. Jerry Gaddy explains how it works. Well, the comb is burned in a modern circulating fluidized bed boiler equipped with uh, the latest pollution control equipment and technology. Hi, this is Mike Kelly, representative of Pennsylvania's 3rd Congressional District. I want to join in congratulating ARIPA on their 25th anniversary, a quarter of a century. For decades, ARIPA members have provided us with the only currently viable option for removing coal refuse stockpiles from the environment, and they've done so at absolutely no cost to the American taxpayer. Now, these plants provide unique environmental benefits by using state-of-the-art CFB technology to convert coal refuse into energy. Now, as you know, this energy helps keep the lights on in hundreds of thousands of homes and is abundant, accessible, and affordable. It's also wholly American. I especially want to thank you for supporting Scrub Grass Generating, which employs many of the people whom I am privileged to represent. I have appreciated the opportunity to work with you during my tenure in Congress and really look forward to what we can accomplish going forward. Thank you for all that you do, and God bless. Hello, I'm State Representative Kathy Rapp of the 65th District, representing all of Warren and Forest Counties and a portion of McKean County. I'm so pleased to congratulate the Anthracite Region Independent Power Producers Association on their 25th anniversary. Pennsylvania has been fortunate to have ARIPA as such an effective advocate for clean, efficient energy production. The events in the Middle East make it even clearer that your efforts in promoting Homegrown energy resources are vital. Aripa, I applaud you and congratulate you on your 25th anniversary and wish you many, many more productive years. Hello, I'm State Representative Julie Harhart of the 183rd District in Lehigh and Northampton Counties. I am so pleased to congratulate the Anthracite Region Independent Power Producers Association on their 25th anniversary. Since 1989, you have advanced the cause of alternative energy electric power production. You have also served as an educator, teaching the public about the clean, 
reliable energy being produced by your members, members like the Northampton Generating Company located in my district. This power plant takes the waste from the region's anthracite coal mining and burns it to create energy for more than 100,000 homes. I applaud you for all your efforts in promoting this industry that is working to create energy in an environmentally friendly manner and has returned thousands of acres of land and streams back to their natural state. Congratulations, Aripa, and best wishes for many more productive years. Each of the plants are equipped with large turbines. Steam, which is produced by the combustion of the comb, drives the turbine and generates electricity. The electricity is then sold wholesale to local utility companies for resale to their customers. In addition to generating electricity, many of the cogen plants also supply steam to local customers. This greenhouse is located next to a cogen plant. Like industrial parks and coal silt dryers, it is just one of many commercial users of steam attracted to Pennsylvania by this economical source of heat, bringing with them hundreds of employment opportunities. Uh, from a bunch of uh, representatives already, I want to repeat what they said. I just want to let you know that Congressman Dent uh, wishes he could be here. Unfortunately, he can't. Um, but we're well, he's well aware that thousands of acres and thousands of jobs have been uh, created and saved, uh, many of which are in his district, and we thank you very much for that. Uh, what a great job of branding. Uh, I had to look up a RIPA to remember exactly what it stands for. You're so well known in Harrisburg. You're well represented. I had to look it up to know that it actually was the Anthracite Region Independent Power Producer Association. Uh, we all know what you do. We all know the good work you do. It's just that that name didn't stick out to me, and I had to look that up. Your impact on the economy is important. Uh, creating jobs, uh, it's, it's tremendous. The energy you produce for our ever-increasing energy appetite, the electricity, very important. But probably the most important contribution is what you're doing to clean up our legacy issues with the abandoned coal piles, the refuse piles, uh, the environment, the impacts on the water in the Commonwealth. I chair the uh, Chesapeake Bay Commission this year, and we're constantly trying to address all the environmental issues, and it's important that when we make progress, and you make major progress when you do your job and clean up these coal refuse files. Uh, I, too, agree. I look forward to the successes of the next 25 years. It's great to reflect back and look at what you've done, but we need you to continue this good work. I'm sure my colleagues will continue to try to do everything they can to help you as we go forward here and allow you to continue to be such a great story for Pennsylvania the citizens of Pennsylvania. So thank you. Hi, I'm State Senator Scott Hutchinson from the 21st Senatorial District. My district includes uh, all or part of six counties up in the northwest part of the state. And I just want to join in congratulating ARIPA on their 25th anniversary this year. Uh, I've had a very close working relationship with ARIPA over the years, uh, formerly serving as the Environmental Resource and Energy Chairman in the House of Representatives. And, and one of the things that, that I, I thought was uh, a, a really bipartisan uh, supported uh, issue over the years was uh, using waste coal to produce energy. It's an alternative energy source. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a great way to re recycle and reuse and, and uh, reclaim old abandoned mine sites. So it's a win-win for so many people. Uh, and, and it's been a pleasure working with ARIPA on, on issues of importance to them. It's also uh, been, been a, a, a delight of mine to, to represent uh, the Scrubgrass Generating Plant, which is a member of ARIPA. Uh, they are a great corporate citizen uh, in southern Bernango County, uh, and, and they, they do produce energy for, uh, for the people of Pennsylvania. And, and once again, the, their mine reclamation work has been outstanding. And they've also done lots of other community things that, that uh, uh, they're, they're well regarded as, as, a, as a great corporate citizen in, in Venango County. So it's a pleasure working with Scrubgrass Generating too. But once again, congratulations, Aripa. Uh, 
well-deserved uh, kudos on your 25th anniversary, and, and, and I look forward to working with you for many, many more years uh, into the future. After the column is burned, the ash, still warm from the combustion process, is used to fill acres of abandoned strip pits. The alkalinity of the ash helps neutralize the underlying acid mine water. As it hardens, the ash forms a cement-like foundation, which is helpful for future development on the reclaimed land. Areas that have been devastated from decades of strip mining are being reclaimed as they're filled with ash, capped with soil, and replanted. For the people of the region, it has changed long overdue. I'd like to congratulate ARIPA for 25 years of success and hard work, uh, your dedication in protecting our environment and growing jobs throughout the district that I represent is very much appreciated in the 29th district. By turning waste coal into energy to power the Commonwealth, ARIPA has helped to remediate waste coal piles all across Pennsylvania. While this milestone is certainly something to be celebrated, I'm looking forward to the next 25 years of ingenuity and resourcefulness from ARIPA and all its staff. Again, congratulations. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, Jeff, thank you for having me here today. It is a pleasure really to be here. I see uh, in the audience uh, uh, my chairman, Chairman Miller, is present. It's a pleasure to be with the chairman and Representative Goodman. It's a pleasure to be with you. And I won't leave anybody out. But, uh, I've made some friends in this group over the last two years, and we have met at various locations around the Commonwealth, and at each and every one of those uh, stops, it has been to celebrate the really good work being done in Pennsylvania to help really repair and restore uh, Pennsylvania's lands, and restore our abandoned mine lands, uh, or reclaim them, improve the environment, repair those environmental scars of our past. Uh, I'm here today really on behalf of the governor. I'm thrilled to be here on my own behalf, but really on behalf of the governor. And it is to present a letter that he wrote to commemorate this occasion, and I will uh, give this to Jeff uh, shortly, but I would like to at least uh, point out some of the things that you, as members of ARIPA, are responsible for, and the, the impact you're having in Pennsylvania that will benefit the, has benefited and will continue to benefit all of our children, your grandchildren, and my grandchildren years from now. It is a legacy that will endure for generations. You are responsible for collectively removing and converting over 212 million tons of coal ash, of coal refuse, and converting it into alternative energy. Think about that for a moment. Think about the impact of 212 million tons. You've reclaimed thousands of acres of formerly environmentally damaged and mine scarred lands. You've restored hundreds of miles of formerly dead and polluted streams. You've eliminated public safety hazards that exist in these areas. You annually produce approximately 1,400 megawatts of alternative energy and steam. You are partly responsible for the reduction in electricity <coughs> in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. There are people in Pennsylvania that do not know that they owe you a debt of thanks and a debt of gratitude for their lower electric bills, but I know it, and the governor knows it. You've donated thousands of dollars to various volunteer watershed and conservation groups who perform abandoned mine land and AMD remediation. Uh, you heard about some of the projects today. But these achievements truly do warrant recognition. And you've been doing a great job for 25 years. I agree with uh, Senator Argel. The next 25 years promises to be just as busy and, and promises to reap just as many rewards for the citizens of this Commonwealth. And so for all you've done and for all you are continuing to do, on behalf of someone <coughs> whose responsibility it is to protect the environment, on behalf of consumers all across Pennsylvania that benefit by your product. Thank you for everything you've done. You deserve great recognition. Um, you've earned it. And I'm just pleased to be here for just a very small portion of, of the, uh, the meeting here over the last couple of days. And so when it comes to the environment, you truly do represent one of the finest examples of the win-win where 
we take environmental problems, we solve them, and we create something beneficial. So thank you for your great work. I didn't want the plant here. In no way, shape, or form did I want the plant here. I fought them. We were in the paper every day. We just didn't want this plant here. But if I would have known then what I know now, uh, like I, I stated before, they're very helpful, they're, they're good to the community, and they're a good neighbor. But it, it is a pleasure for me to be here today. Uh, I represent Schuylkill County, which is only about an hour north of here. I have three coal fire plants in my legislative district, all burning anthracite. And much of it has already been said by many of my colleagues, both the congressmen, the senators, and the members of the House. I agree with the secretary. I think David Arnold said it best when he said what we're really looking forward to is the next 25 years of ARIPA's success. But on a personal note, I would just like to say I grew up in the coal region. I grew up running through the coal banks and through the orange water and everything. I went to Harrisburg 24 years ago. Uh, I've been a member for 12, but I went to work in Harrisburg 24 years ago, which is about the time when my three power plants went on, uh, Gilbert and Power, Wheeler Brader and Frackville, and, SC, and SER in, uh, in, uh, in West Pine Township. And the difference in that 24 years is absolutely incredible. What you people have done to my area is really <coughs> a shining example of what a river does, uh, both here in Pennsylvania and, and nationally. Uh, <coughs> I wish I could take you through and see where there used to be coal banks and orange water and, and, and just wasteland, and how you've turned that into green fields, switchgrass, wooded area, how you've put my people to work, how you've taken a refuge that was once discarded and made it into a viable product. Uh, I tell my colleagues all the time who come from areas who don't actually see it like I have said, my plants go down, your lights go out. That gets their attention. Ron and I have worked very closely together as Democrats and Republicans. This is not a bipartisan issue here in Pennsylvania. The anthracite that was mined in my legislative district fueled the Industrial Revolution. It can do it again. I congratulate you on 25 years of success. A pleasure to be here uh, and, and work with Ripa. And I represent Carbon County, the 122nd district. We have uh, Panther Creek uh, as the uh, Ripa plant, uh, and they're doing a great job. Uh, echo the comments of, uh, of everybody on stage uh, and uh, the wonderful job you're doing actually cleaning up uh, these uh, coal refuge piles. I uh, also want to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Representative Jared Gibbons uh, and myself have co authored uh, legislation uh, for tax credits uh, to try to help out. Uh, Ripa and uh, moving forward with the coal, coal gain uh, operations and, and helping you to get some extra capital. So uh, whatever I can do uh, to further uh, create opportunities uh, to clean up the environment at the same time break out electricity rates, uh, like you said, it is a win-win. Uh, thank you. Day in and day out, the work continues, changing both the economic and physical landscape. By the time we're done here, we hope to have reclaimed about 400 acres of coal wasteland and also of abandoned strip mine. Every project in the area that, that's burning comb or using comb for fuel in their, their boilers is doing basically the same thing with their ash and disposing of it in abandoned mine lands and reclaiming them, saving the taxpayers millions of dollars uh, that otherwise would have needed to be spent to reclaim this land. Uh, there's a project not far from here, about four or five miles, where the federal government spent about $12 million in the last four or five years to reclaim an abandoned uh, mine pit. Here we're going to reclaim 400 acres of abandoned mine pits to, at no cost to the taxpayers. Hi, this is State Representative Pam Snyder, representing the 50th District. My district encompasses all of Greene County and portions of Washington and Fayette counties. I want to say thank you, Aripa. Thank you, congratulations on 25 years of protecting the environment in Pennsylvania, of keeping abandoned mine sites cleaned up, of helping our streams be free of acid mine drainage, and of all the work you do to keep Pennsylvania clean. Again, congratulations on 25 years Keep up the good work. 
Hi, this is Donna Oberlander, the representative from the 63rd District, which includes all of Clarion County and a portion of Armstrong County. I regret that I am unable to join you today as you celebrate this important milestone, but I sincerely congratulate ARIPA and all of its members on 25 years. The tremendous impact that you have had on this Commonwealth has not gone unnoticed. And I was honored to be the prime sponsor of the resolution to honor your service and your 25 years. I wish you many more years of success. And again, congratulations. Job well done. A cheap energy source at a site where I can locate plants who may need steam or high temperatures uh, for their product, it's right there with the cogeneration plant. I'm getting rid of calm. I'm generating electricity, which I can sell off to the utility. The excess I can use in my industrial park, where I've created jobs, which means I'm bringing more money in and moving within the area. Uh, let me first say that uh, I'm honored to be the president of the river, to uh, represent all the hardworking people and all the work they do. That is truly an honor. Uh, and that's what really motivates us, it would drive us. We have a great story. We love telling it. I, I listen to people to tell the story. And, and I hear the story, but there's something else that I see. I see a lot of passion. I see a lot of passion within the Arepa organization. And I see a lot of pride. And that's what's really important. We have challenges going forward. Uh, we've heard of some of them, but basically, we have a lot of federal activity, regulatory activity that is threatening our industry. We are now competing in the open markets. We're competing against the six, 700 megawatt plants. We're competing against natural gas. We're in the heart of the Marcel Shell. The price of natural gas is, is below market prices. It's making it very difficult. So to continue our success, we're gonna need all that passion. We're gonna need the passion not only from the members of RIPA, the RIPA organization, we're gonna need it from all the stakeholders. We're gonna need it from the regulatory folks, the legislative folks, both congressional uh, in Washington as well as Harrisburg, the environmental groups, the people at, on the town, the people on the ground, because we have some challenges ahead. And that passion is what it takes when we go to Washington, D.C. to tell our story. And we can tell them that we have the state of Pennsylvania behind us because we're doing good work. That is a very, very powerful story. So. We have a lot of work ahead of us. We've done a great thing for 25 years. Hopefully, we can go another 25. So I want to say thank you to everybody who has come here. Thank you for all the support. We really appreciate it. And tell your friends about our story and let the, let the story gain, gain more ground. Good neighbor. They don't bother at all. You don't know they're here. these abandoned strip pits are, right now you can actually see deer grazing in the reforested areas. And the, the game abounds in all of it, and to me, it's a hell of an achievement to get somewhere and gain something. And it was once barren wasteland. For years, the state and federal governments have been trying to find ways to clean up the acid mine drainage problems and the abandoned strip mine problems that have polluted our rivers and scarred our countryside. The modern cogeneration plants have found a, a solution to these problems at no cost to us, the taxpayers. Uh, these plants will be cleaning up the rivers and restoring the topography and finally closing the loop which was started over a century ago with the old coal mines finishing a job that was left unfinished for so long.